you're in Montreal, you've had a great start, and the city loves you, but the organization is trying to keep you grounded. Is it hard to stay grounded with all of this focus and attention and everything? I don't think so. I when P.K. Subban took his first steps on NHL ice, you knew that he was bound for stardom, as Subban was truly electrifying. Ah, for the metal stick handling, beautiful was Monster hits, clutch plays. He was a complete package. Keep in mind, just years prior, was a second round pick, who was ranked in the fourth, if not fifth round, because NHL scouts confidently believed that his offense would not translate, and that his defensive game was non-existent. Yet, here we are. Back in 2010, P.K. Subban was the most exciting prospect in the world, as not only did Subban make an immediate impact for the Montreal Canadiens, but he started his career playing excruciating playoff hockey, and he delivered. In 2010, after the hype of his playoff success, Subban would have an impressive rookie season. 14 goals, 38 points in 77 games. But more importantly, Subban would shut up all the haters by playing a respectable defensive game combined with grit and goal scoring. In 2012, his offense didn't progress, but his shutdown game showed promising progression. In 2013, the players and us fans had to endure a 100 day partial lockout. However, the NHLPA and owners would miraculously come to an agreement. And this season, PK Subban would go to another level, as not only did PK lead all defensemen in points with 38 points in 42 games, but my man played an elite two way game. Thus, Subban would win the Norris Trophy in his third NHL season, beating out Ryan Suter by 33 votes, and claiming the first Norris Trophy for the Canadians since Chris Chelios in 1989. In the next three seasons, Subban kept the status quo, as he would even nearly claim his second Norris Trophy in 2015. However, he'd be slightly edged out by Eric Carlson. During the stretch from his Norris win until 2016, Numerous reports were coming out that Subban was a locker room cancer. More specifically, that Subban thought he was bigger than the team, bigger than the game. As past teammates have come out and said that Subban was notorious for skipping out on team functions. To go to parties. Now, to be fair, these actions are harmless. But without a doubt, over time, you will end up with a team that resents you. Which is why it's not surprising whatsoever that P.K. Subban has been repeatedly been taped for fighting his own teammates in practice. He was still an elite defenseman, but his nature as an outspoken, eccentric character was undoubtedly going to cause many rifts. Especially when you play in a massive hockey market like Montreal, who loves to dramatize and report on team drama. And we would see this come to fruition firsthand, as P.K. Subban would be scratched from Team Canada during the 2014 Olympics, as he would only play one game in the tournament, even though he was one year removed from winning the Norris. In spite of all the drama and preliminary trade rumors, P.K. Subban would sign one of the largest contracts in NHL history, as he would sign an eight-year, $72 million contract, which carried a 9 million AAV. Subban was now making more than Sidney Crosby. However, the drama would persist internally. Externally though, it was a completely different story. On the ice, he was still that elite defenseman. And off the ice, he was one of the most charitable players in the league. As he would start the P.K. Subban Foundation, pledging $10 million to the Montreal Children's Hospital, which was the largest donation by any Canadian athlete. Subban was a man of the Montreal people. Following the 2016 NHL season, trade rumors were heating up surrounding P.K. Subban. However, during press conferences, Mark Bergerman would repeatedly dismiss these rumors, saying that Subban was a major piece to the team, and that it would have to be something special for him to even consider trading Subban. Mark, big news today in Brossard, uh, you've just made one of the biggest trades in franchise history. And well, where there's smoke, there's fire. Mark Bergervan and the Montreal Canadiens would make a massive blockbuster deal, as they would send Subban to Nashville. One for one for Shea Weber, and at the time, this 
train seemed ludicrous. As fans were ready to riot, as Subban was 28, Weber was 32, and statistically the same player, if not worse, especially considering the age factor in the following fall 2016, Subban would make his Predators debut. And you know what? People love, and I mean love, to discredit Subban. But Subban was low-key a stud in Nashville, as he would play an elite two-way game in Nashville, and he would be a pivotal piece in helping the Predators make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. Which leads to a conversation I have to bring up. Because as of today, we are seeing a serious case of recency bias. Quote unquote, PK Subban was never that good. This is complete BS. Because from his Norris win in 2013, leading into the 2018 season, PK Subban was a top 10, if not top 5 defenseman during that stretch. Yet, the amount of disrespect I see online and from fans and analysts is just mind-blowing. Because in 2018, Subban would once again finish as a Norris finalist, which is also the second time in his career he would finish top 3. And so it begs the question, how would us fans feel about Subban if he wasn't a finalist and won those two other Norris trophies, meaning he nearly won three Norris trophies in a six-year stretch? That would have been incredible and P.K. Subban would have cemented himself as one of the all-time greats. But he didn't. He came close, but didn't. So does that take away from his greatness? I don't think so. As Subban's story reminds me of the Eric Carlson saga. People forget way too quickly just how good you were. Because after Subban's six years of dominance, he would be shockingly traded to the New Jersey Devils for Steven Santini, Jeremy Davies, and two second round picks. A trade that was bizarre, as Subban was one year removed from being the Norris finalist and was on the cover of NHL 19. However, with the caveat that Subban made 9 million per season, Nashville treated it as a cap dump to make room to sign Matt Duchesne. When P.K. Subban was heading to the Devils, it was exciting. A fresh start where he could be the number one guy. However, this is where the incredible fall from grace would take place. As Subban would go from a top defenseman, a previous Norris winner, three-time Norris finalist, to falling off a cliff analytically. Because in an instant, his defensive game would take a nosedive. But it's okay, he has some offense in him. Psych! P.K. Subban was now producing at the lowest levels of his career. And all of this given his massive 9 million AAV, Subban was arguably the worst valued player in the entire NHL, as he would put up 18 points in year 1, 19 points in year 2, and 22 points in year 3 with the Devils. And so after being on top of the hockey world for nearly a decade, Subban went from 100 to 0 real quick, as he would have an epic fall from grace. When Subban signed his $72 million deal, he would say that this was going to be his final NHL contract. And well, it was. As this season, P.K. Subban would shockingly retire. A disheartening and turbulent story of one of the greatest black hockey players. And even though this downfall was dramatic, some would say instantaneous, for a controversial player who had many haters because of his polarizing character. I think it's important to remember Subban for the hit he made on the Rat Marchand. One of the greatest hits in NHL history. His charity work, as Subban would even take home a King Clancy award in his final season. His game and his prime. Turns all the way back to the line, look out, dangerous spot there. On, all the way with it, and he knocked it home. Because regardless of whether you hated him or loved him, you can't say that he wasn't an electrifying player who has the accolades to back up his Hall of Fame career. And yes, it's okay to make fun of his downfalls because when you are a massive character like P.K. Subban, unfortunately, you're kind of asking for it and it's gonna happen. But personally, I'm gonna remember P.K. Subban as the player I watched during his first playoff game. A player that would become one of my all-time favorites. But goddamn, his fall off was insane.